and welcome everyone to Trek Kills Mission Briefing, a Wednesday dose of Ship of Goodness. Today we're looking at something new, something different, something unusual, and something hopefully quite cool. Because what did we get revealed, sort of, in the last episode of Star Trek Discovery, Stuart? We got a look at the uh, Baran, the USS Baran, mm. or the ISS Baran, actually. Yes. But it'd be the same as the USS Baran. Uh, very cool, a little flyby while Lorca was telling yes. his tale of how he got into the mirror from the mirror universe to the prime universe, um, and it was a great shot. It was a great, you know, you see it coming above mm -hmm. the Empress ship, and then you see it. It was just an amazing shot, way better than most of the space shots we've seen in Discovery so far, and a cool a real, looking ship to boot. It's a real space shot. Yeah, and a cool looking ship to boot. It's very much like the uh, Constellation class, uh, the four nacelle yep. design, which is cool. And it's worth noting that we have seen this ship before in the class. It's a, sorry pronunciation, it's a Mexican word, but Cardenas class, uh, named after presumably Mexican president. Yes, we Googled it. And that actually was the USS Jaeger featured in the initial uh, pilot, one of the ships of the Battle of the Binary Star. Yes. And we've got images from this episode of Discovery, plus the concept images released, plus the Eagle Moss images of the Jaeger. So three distinct things today, but yes. Uh, the brand registry is NCC1422. Ooh. And the Jaeger is 1437. So there you go, worth noting. And it is interesting, the other ships of the Battle of the Binary Star, there's a 1413, 1683, uh, 1648, and 1255. So actually in quite a consistent range. Oh, and 1004 and 1661. Anyway. So yeah, Stuart, your first reaction to the Bran, um, I'm really happy you got to see her. And what do you think of the class? Because we've sort of avoided yeah. doing these subships for a while, but now we're doing one, so what do you think? Yeah, well, I was really happy to see it, and mm -hmm. mainly because the shot was so long and such a great flyby of the camera, I was just really impressed with it. Uh, and uh, wasn't sure we were going to see the Baran at all, because um, it had been mentioned a few times. But it's cool to see the ship that Lorca commanded. So I was very impressed with it. I like the design. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's very much built at the same time as the Shenzhou, you can tell, just mm. by the hull configuration with the numbers <laughs> on the sides. Uh, that Just that style seems to speak to that. So, And I think it's I think it's a fantastic design. I really like it. I do prefer three nacelled ships, but I don't. <laughs> I know we're never going to see those um, in canon. Well, uh, we've got the Galaxy X, I guess, but uh, I do like my three nacelled dreadnoughts, <laughs> but four seems to be the closest I'll get to anything like that. Not, I don't even know. I don't think this is a dreadnought of any kind. I think it's just a, for like like the constellation. It's yeah. just a, a regular heavy cruiser kind of class ship. Now I'm looking at it, and honestly, what I see is a combination of three ships. You've got the oval source of the galaxy, mm -hmm. which I didn't notice until right now. You've got the back piece of the Shinjo with the fins, an almost identical back piece. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, fauna cell, and which are, which are then the engines of discovery. So it's actually an interesting mishmash. What do you think about seeing an oval saucer? Because that was the big thing about the galaxy. Seeing the pre-TOS version. Uh, it's interesting. Um, I prefer the more rounder saucers, but in this case it looks fine. It actually makes it look... Yeah. Uh, Proportioned, even? Yeah. I, I'm not, yeah, yeah. It's weird. Good weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I, I like that idea for that shape. Um and one thing I got to point out too is, when we first see it coming, like, like being chased mm -hmm. by the emperor, the shot from the front is interesting because the the this bottom the oh, cells, yeah. the, lower, the lower in the cells, goes oh, straight yeah. out, and then the oh. upper ones kind of angle up. So it's, oh, wow. it's not like an X. It's not like an X wing configuration. It's got a very. It almost looks like a Babylon Five ship <laughs> wow. from that front shot. <clears throat> and there's a very visible, big ass glowing piece on the front on the bottom. I'm assuming yes. deflector. But, again, different to Discovery. Because the thing is, we talked to John Eves about this yonks ago. Um, and he does say things on his Facebook page uh, occasionally. But one thing about Discovery is that... And I think it's the way he's rationalising it to himself so he can design so many odd things. But it was very much that the things designed... And if you look at the Eagle Moss revealed of all the ships, you know, they're, every ship is so different. Very, very different. Um, they are the iterative tester steps, the what if, the let's try this steps between NX and TOS, most of which obviously fail, do not continue, um, push into what is the consistent feel later on, but they are the testers. So n these ships could be anywhere 
in the line of ships. The fact that this has Discovery S nacelles could imply it's newer or a refit or oh, a refit for like the, the motion picture enterprise. But the fact that it's got the fins at the back could imply it's a Shinjo old 50 year, whatever year design or even older because it's so less refined. It's not got the red. This could be a 75 year old ship, you know, maybe not with a hull number, but these ships could be anywhere obviously with a certain margin of either of a buffer of either side between Enterprise and TOS. So it's an interesting, it's an in-between ship. It's weird. It's good weird. It's good. I, I was pleased to see Fauna sell because obviously we've seen two in canon, they exist. Why the hell wouldn't you have Fauna cells in Enterprise era in TOS? I mean, they're not going to suddenly try them for the, co for the Constellation. That's not going to be a new thing. You know, no one, it didn't take you 150 years to say, what if you put Fauna cells? So, I like the variety at least. Hornet cells don't add speed. Nerd, nerd, nerd. I'm not even gonna get in that conversation. But anyway, I'm looking at the view of it from the back um, uh, as it's kind of flying into the ion storm there. And the struts don't look the same as they did from the front. <laughs> it, this looks more like an X Wing configuration yeah. as opposed to that front view. So, maybe, do you think the bottom ones articulate or the top ones maybe articulate? I, I Lock! Think Lock the cells into attack position. <laughs> I think yeah. the angle of the lens changes everything. Um, yeah. But I think it's fair to say that the front portion is actually a shuttle bay, the the inner recessed piece. Um, because that would be a door. Because I mean, clamshell doors is vaguely consistent. Um, well, I'm gonna say no because if okay. you look at the either the early sketch drawing or the rendering. Um, it almost appears like there's two shuttle bay doors on each side of that forward part. Uh, that forward part could be like an observation lounge of some kind. Oh. Also, it could also be it could be a shuttle bay door. But judging oh. by the sketch particularly, it appears that there are shuttle bay doors on the front on each side of that centerpiece. Wow, yeah, let's let's absolutely stay on this image. Did not I was trying to stick with the first image, but wow, yeah, that's interesting. Um I mean, no clue what scale is. I mean, the engines are far more proportioned than Discovery's. Um, they look actually f fine, these nacelles. Yeah. They look fine. They don't look, you know, again, I w I'd love to know why they decided to give super long nacelles, because it's never been explained or talked about or whatever. It still looks out of proportion. Um, yeah. But this, these work just fine. But yeah, that's, that's if it's a medium-sized ship, it could be, you know, hollow-ish saucer. Only the top deck has... Uh, you know, uh, crew quarters and, and command center, and the back piece is is the is the supplies bit. No shot about the back, but instead, doors in the front. That's that's interesting. That's certainly new, but also not yeah. new because the constellation has similar. It has shuttle bays on the either side. Yes, the constellation does have quite a few shuttle bays uh, around the the saucer. Um, and looking at both the sketch and the well, all the pictures of it, the sketch and the render uh, early on of the Jaeger. Uh, it does appear that the bridge is that very forward module. Yeah. Uh, which again, if those are both launch doors and you have more support craft or secondary craft, what better place to put your bridge than so you can monitor what's yeah. going on with your launching? You can have. I think that's an awesome idea. Um, don't well, really know. Don't really know the purpose of the ship, but that that would be that'd be interesting. Well, for the cells at least in terms of hardware, has got more hardware than tuna cells. So it implies it could be a more specialised purpose. I wouldn't have said fallen cells would link to a carrier necessarily, unless it is a big ship and needs the needs the extra warp nacelles to create the bubble and keep it strong. I do not get a sense of scale from the ship. There are windows, but windows are not necessarily consistent on all the other ships because not necessarily, and the Shinjo doesn't feel as lit, but big as it is, even with the windows, you know, so mm, we're not going to go by window scale because it's really unhelpful. But it looks, it's certainly a big ship if this if windows are to be believed. It's huge. And in fact, almost no windows, which would definitely back up the idea of having a... The, the entire source is a shuttle bay. You wouldn't need to have windows in a shuttle bay. And only the middle slice has windows. So that would certainly back up that. Um, and I'm looking at the render for that. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, like it's it's a cool ship. It really is. Um, and we know we know um, Admiral Anderson's ship was a four nacelled ship as well. I don't think it was the same class though. It was the Nimitz class. 
Uh, mm. And I think it was it, that was implied to be like a bigger version, like a dreadnought. Uh, well, Nimitz, the Nimitz itself yeah. s- says size yeah. and scale because the Nimitz aircraft carrier was huge. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, this could be the four nacelles have to serve a purpose, obviously. Um, but yeah, I think I like the idea of having uh, kind of that f- forward part being a shuttle bay. Yeah. Section in the saucer. Although looking at the picture of the Buran, the ISS Buran, it doesn't appear that those are shuttle bay doors. Really, they kind of blend in too much. Yeah. But there are distinct red lights above them, which could be markers of for like leading ships in. It's hard to say. It's really hard to say. And obviously, it is an ISS ship, so we do give them slight creative leniency for changing it. This was noted. I was looking at the Europa because again, Eagle Moss provided gorgeous renders, and the bridge module is quite similar. Styling-wise, oh, we know the bridges at the top, at the back, on the on the um, uh, roll bar, it looks similar, not identical, but uh, to the Jaeger. So that certainly implies. This. I mean, obviously, it's the bridge. It feels like it's the bridge. Um, but yeah, go back to the the brand. I mean, it's yeah, the doors are certainly hidden, but purpose-wise, I don't know. It's what? How do you feel about having the registry on the sides of the saucer? Because that's something that's only done in Discovery, and it breaks a lot of the the flow of the ship and, and, and to be fair only done in in between era because discovery has their own thing so it's only done certain yeah in the europa so i guess maybe that's a sign of when the era is you know if, yeah. if it's side mounted it's between an x and whatever and if it's f- forward mounted it's it's post it's um, everything else <laughs> it's everything else yeah good way of saying it's true um <laughs> i like the i like them on the side it looks neat uh but yeah, I do prefer the the standard placement, obviously, because that's what we're used to. However, I gotta say, I gotta go through these real quick. Yep. You look at the uh, illustration, and yep. you've got smaller version of the registry, but it's very distinctly the uh, refit style font. You okay. move up to the rendering; it's larger, and it's very clearly the TOS styled font for the registry number. I don't know the difference. I can't see it, but thank you for being the, the genius that can see it. There is a difference, trust me. Oh no! I, and then, yeah. and then, if you go to the uh, picture of the Buran, uh, it's very much the same size as the render, but and the same the same font, but it's a bold font. It's a lot thicker than you yeah, see on well, the render. It feels bigger, yeah. Um, if not, is bigger. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So it's just interesting the iterations that they've kind of gone through there, and even even when we do, looked at the Europa. When it was getting destroyed, the kind of the the trailer version of it and the actual show version were slightly different. Yeah, uh, yeah. the registry train changed there as well because in the preview version yep. in the trailer it was very distinctly TOS uh, font, and then later uh, for the actual episode it was a re- it was like we see in the illustration here the refit styled font, which was just an odd choice to make for the time period. Just go with TOS. Well, font. M- many many. Th- Things are odd choices for time period. Um, but yeah, good. Didn't notice that. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's a cool ship. I like it. I do like the Buran. If we go back to the the Buran picture as well, would you agree that there are there are um well okay if you if you start off in the uh the rendering shows it best, it does have fins at the back of each nacelle like uh, other ships as well. If you have the rendering uh-huh. though. Uh, the brand's right. It looks as if the leading edge, uh, the one pointing forward, on each of them is now lit, which is weird and unheard of. What do you think? Because they're in the same places on every nacelle, and that's where the fins are. Huh. Yeah. They look cool lit, like it adds yeah. something to it, but yeah. my my thinking would be that those are actually floodlights to shine on the registry that's on the side of the cells. Would be my guess, but it seems overblown because if you look at the ones on the struts, there's ones that shine down on the struts too. Um, well, yeah, and we can see the internal nacelle on the top left. There is no light hitting the side of the nacelle. Exactly. Yeah. Um, no, that's great. That would be that would be perfect, but no. Well, it could be because they're close to a planet and there's there's sh- shine from the sun <laughs> and the, the ion storm, of course, interfering with our le- the yeah. view. Uh, plus the big glow from the big mycelium and, drive and, thing. And yet behind we can it. still see the spotlights hitting the. The struts, so I don't think that's the problem. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's clearly Discovery style. It's clearly Shinjo esque, but mm. 
newer. My my gut beats say newer, but older than Europa. <sighs> I just, I mean, yeah, it, I w- it, 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 yeah. yeah, I would say it's definitely kind of Shinjo era, but like you said, a little newer because the nacelles are distinctly different. Well, it couldn't, it could be older too, though. Uh, no, it couldn't because the discovery style nacelles. Well, also, the Europa, I believe, had orange facades. Nope, blue. Ignore that. Yeah. Uh, huh. Cool ship. <laughs> and it would certainly. If it's another of those long range explorers, and I mean the brand, I mean, if Lork was a trusted, ex- I mean, again, they were explorers. This is before any, it was a long time after the Romulan War. Um, okay, the Prometheus was an explorer, but it was a deep long range ship. That was partly for an cell design. The Constellation was a deep range explorer. This could be the TOS, pre TOS deep space explorer. It would explain the slightly larger scale, because I mean, the Constitution is a little bit larger, more bulked up. Mm-hmm. Um, sort of fits with this a little bit. I mean, this is clearly the, the inspiration is the constellation. Um, but I, I do, I do quite like the fact that it has the oval uh, saucer. Cut. I had not noticed that yet. Um, again, we we try not to look at these ships until we look at the episode properly because that's part of the fun is to really analyze them. Um, but yeah, huh? Huh? <laughs> Cool ship. I like this ship. I want to see more of it. Um, more more versions of it. And I want to know if those are launch doors for the shuttles. And also, no bridge window. If that's a bridge. The bridge might be on the bottom. Like, maybe behind uh, the deflector or something. Like, we don't get a shot of the bottom of it. All yeah. these shots that we have are the exact same <laughs> um, Basically. Angle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, but based on the arrangement of it and based on other ships, I think it's pretty fair. Um, and they made the Shinjo specific on the bottom for a specific reason, slash it was cool. If you do it for every other ship, it's like, well, okay. Yeah. Um, but it'd be nice to know if this was the in-between, because the, well, the Europa has a has a bridge window um, for some reason. Ugh, bridge windows. Um, but yeah, I, it, again, we're at the point, though, where we're sort of Stockholm syndromed. You know, what are we, like, 20 weeks in with the, the break in between to these designs, yeah. so we're not looking at... And obviously, obviously it doesn't fit TOS. Obviously it doesn't fit whatever. It certainly looks post-NX, like NX, NX plus 50 years. Uh-huh. That's why I love if all these ships are the in between both eras. Like, the slapdash, that's everything we see. Yeah. Then they transition to the sleek look. Like, that I'd be totally fine with. Um, that's why I'm still holding out hope that it can be explained because it's a really interesting fact how they evolved through, you know. Yeah. Um, but it obviously doesn't fit in TOS. But as a design itself, it works. It's a good Star sh- Star Trek ship. It's interesting. It's grey. Uh, that's only if it's more NX, but doesn't fit TOS. Doesn't fit anything post. Um, and it's also a dark stripe. It's, it's a weirdly painted ship. It doesn't. It, it, yeah. It's, it's like a lot of Discovery ships. It's very dark, very black, very, you know, being lit by itself and still dark because of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Not on the reef, which looks beautiful, because it's, you know, this coral and just looks like, ooh, that's beautiful. Or even the uh, the Connie. Uh, small thing, but, yeah. 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 It's good. Anyway, I think <laughs> that's probably it for this discussion on the brand, guys, or the whatever class it is. I forget. Slash Jaeger slash called the uh, scroll 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 uh, the Cardinus class the Cardinus class which was a I would prefer Jaeger class president. well yeah but anyway um cool design and a very neat ship like don't get me wrong I would love to have this thing in Star Trek Online or something it just doesn't fit with the time period as we've been saying all along but and I know that that's just the that's that's just the the status quo of this stuff <laughs> yep. Yeah. And so we look at it as its own merit as well, because it all deserves yeah. its own merit, you know. And I'd be prepared to be called a fash or a, a TOS fanboy and TOS Easter, <laughs> whatever. In the comments, I'm used to that now. But whatever, it is what it is. It's supposed to fit into a time period. It doesn't, so we're gonna call it out. Sorry. Mm-hmm. But, anyways, what do you guys think of this design? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you want to see more of it? Um, let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video around, visit our Facebook page, 
share more pictures of this ship on the Facebook page and have discussions with other fans there as well. As that's always a fun thing to do, and we got a great community, and I really love what we've what we've accomplished over there on Facebook. So check it out. Yeah, and just support us on Patreon if you would like, or one time donation if you would like, because everything helps support this show and all these great discussions. As Stuart said, we do a lot, a lot of different things, and we want to do a lot more on a lot more different things. So if you can support, please do. So until next time, guys. Basically tomorrow for another Trek Hills discussion on another part of Discovery in the previous episode. I am Commander Kongs. I am Captain Foley. I'll see, see you, you soon, time. guys. Bye.